Author Benjamin Booty has discovered what it means to leave the darkness and walk into the light. After years of drugs, partying, and living a rock and roll lifestyle, Benjamin found himself at rock bottom. But it was that turning point that God used to show Benjamin what it means to live a life of freedom in Christ. I recently spoke with Benjamin about his life experiences, starting with growing up in a large family. Being the youngest out of eight, I, I see my brothers and sisters kind of find their niche. They were good at this and that, and I felt like I, I couldn't find that niche. And, uh, and I really like music, so I, so I started playing music when I was about 14, 15, and, and I, I thought I, I kind of found it, and I felt that thing that would, would be my acceptance through, you know, through that music. I actually started playing in church, which was a good thing, uh, but a lot of the guys, a lot of the bands that I was listening to and, and enjoyed at that time were, uh, you know, some bands that they, they were public about their lifestyle, about, you know, drinking and drugging, and so I knew it wasn't right, but it, it was definitely an influence in my life. And then as I got a little bit older, actually my mom passed away, and that was the, the toughest moment in my life for me. I didn't know how to talk or share what the things I was going through. And, uh, and music kind of being my release, um, I chose that route, but I was super upset with God. I actually said I, would, I hated God at that moment in my life, the day after the funeral. And I bought some whiskey and some drugs, and, and I turned my back on God. You know, for, for a good 10 years, I went through uh, drinking and drugging and, and just saying I didn't believe in God. But when things got rough, I'd still talk to Him, you know. But, you know, I just denied it, and I wanted to... Uh, just play, I played in a lot of bar gigs, a lot of big bands, opened up for radio gigs, and you know, I've really felt like I'm fulfilling this calling that I had in my heart that I wanted to do. But the bigger the shows, just the emptier I became. It just really wasn't, just really wasn't what, what, I, what I thought it would be. I literally lost pretty much everything, and I ended up in, uh, I had my house, but I didn't have any furniture. I had my guitars, I needed my tools to trade, you know, as, it, as you could say. Uh, my friends or people I don't even know would drop me off on the, on, the, on the porch or in my house because I was too buzzed up to even know where I was at you know, and, until uh, a friend shared with me the gospel. And the most amazing thing is, is the Bible that I found that I had was my mom's Bible. Wow. You know, so, so I started reading it in Proverbs uh, 4.19. It says, the way of the wicked is like darkness. They don't know what, what makes them stumble. And that stopped me on my tracks because I forgot why I was running. I forgot what I was even living for. Why do I need these heavy drugs? Why do I need to do these things to even, at that point, go to sleep? I didn't really go to sleep. I'd pass out. You know, I needed a Savior. I needed Jesus. You know, and I, I literally got on my knees and I started reading that Bible, my mom's Bible. In three or four days, I confessed. I don't even know how long I confessed. I don't even know if it was day or night. I mean, literally just asked Jesus to forgive me for the way I treated my family, the way I talked to people, even strangers. I, I, I tried to turn up every, every rock and just say, forgive me. And literally, it's amazing how in my life, how God took all that stuff off my shoulders. As they say, addiction, you know, you have to fill it with something else. And I believe the Holy Spirit filled it with, with a hunger and thirst for His Word. And some people might say, well, why doesn't that work for me? All I can say is that a relationship with, with God and with people is always different because we're all different. And that doesn't mean my relationship isn't changing with God, but I have to continue to grow. Communication it sounds so easy, but it can be very difficult, you know, and that's kind of part of the book or in a good warfare, how things in life can get rough, you know. But what, what led you to, <laughs> to writing the book? How, how did that process play out? I literally believe that it was the Holy Spirit. I had a dream about being a lion tamer, okay. and, and, it, and just out of growing up in church, I was like, well, what's the lion? I thought Daniel and the lions did. And then I, so I read the book of Daniel, and uh, his prayer life is what the Holy Spirit really pointed out at me. And going back to that hunger and thirst, no matter what Daniel happened in Daniel's life, the hardships or the good times, he prayed three times a day. And I equated that, well, God, that's like how I eat. 
you know, I make my three main courses, you know, personally, and just, he was just showing me, Benjamin, how important it is to pray. And it's like, well, what is pray? It's just a relationship with me. I want to be a part of you. I want to be a part of your life, but you have to invite me in and, and make me a part of your every day, not just one time in a day, just make me a part of your day. You know, like, you, like I say look, to people, like you'd call your wife for, you know, advice, or what should I get at the store? That might sound funny, but, yeah. you know, God literally wants to be there for us okay. like that. Yeah. As you were reading your mom's Bible, coming back to the Lord, meeting him for the first time, mm -hmm. what was that like, the emotions of what your mom taught you, you're reading her Bible, the anger you had at God, how did that all kind of stir up in you in those moments, those days, those weeks? It, it, it literally, Andy, it, it was just amazing. I, the Bible says the old man's dead and gone, and he gives you a new creation. That's literally what it felt like it was gone. Literally, my, my eating habit even felt like it changed, and it did. Like, God touched me and, and, and changed my life, and it's amazing how He does what He does. And, and the, the feeling of the anger and the angst, being unaccepted, abandoned, I felt abandoned big time. You know, like, God did this, and my mom's gone, and now I'm out of the band, I'm, you know, lost all my stuff. Who cares? Give me the hardest drugs you got. I'll take them. I don't care about my life, you know, but God's like, Benjamin, I got a purpose. I got a plan for you. Little by little, line upon line, just spending time in that relationship with God and his word. You know, I didn't know what I was even running away from. That's the thing about sin. It blinded me so much. That I didn't even realize that I was even upset at God for what happened. Like I, I partied so much through those years. I literally was just lost. You know, and then God brought me back, and as he says, I'll bring light to your darkness. Going back to looking at my mom, I didn't really want to deal with that. You know, I was super mad at God, you know, but, but God is there, and he's faithful, and, and he forgives, you know, and that's something that we can't earn because it wouldn't be forgiveness if we earned it, you know, and it, the, the amazing thing is, is he's just there waiting to flourish and, and, and bless you through the ups and downs, because there will be ups and downs, because reading through his word, it says he reigns on the just and the unjust, and we just have to believe and know that he's faithful. As Benjamin continued to pursue God, he found more and more evidence that God truly did want a relationship with him. And it's the same for you and me. God desires a relationship with each of us. When we slow down our busy lives and take time to simply be with God, amazing things can happen. You know, and then God brought me back, and as he says, I'll bring light to your darkness. He started revealing the things that I needed to change and needed to fix and needed to work on. But he says it's just as simple as you draw near to me, Benjamin, I'll draw near to you. Because it's amazing how things, so many things, oh, i got to do this and do all that. But he, he brings it back down to saying, draw near to me, draw near to me. You know, and then through that learning prayer life and reading his word, learning how to pray, learning what to pray for or, or how to pray, and he, and he guides us through that in the, in the Word. It's just amazing, you know, but it just literally I felt the chains yeah. fall off, yeah. you know. I felt the weight of all that unforgiveness, all that hurt, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, the addictions are like icing on the cake. They said, you know, God really got down to, to the root of my, my, my heart and just changed it. It's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> it, it's an amazing <laughs> journey, and then what you're now able to pass on because of how your life has changed, what would you say, uh, as people read this book, what would you like them to, to really get out of it? Well, I, I really would love, you know, the first chapter, uh, it talks about uh, knowing the truth, being prepared for the truth. And God talks about girding ourselves with the truth. It's of the foundation of what we, what we believe. And people go say, well, it's relative, whatever you believe is truth. And, you know, in, in life, it, it's not so. You know, there's one truth, and Jesus says that. And just don't take my word for it. Go find it in the Word and seek it. Not even in the Bible. There's, there's going to be a lot of other things that are going to really point you. And what I've came through my study is that you literally just have to say no and walk away from it. But that truth, what, I, what, what Jesus talks to, his first tem the temptation in, in, in Matthew 4, mm -hmm. the devil says, if you are the Son of Man. And the devil will always come to us, and even our own opinions will always like, if it is the Word of God. But Jesus said, it is written. 
And I think that is so vitally important. We have to have faith to believe that it is written and have faith to believe that God said he's going to do what he's going to do, no matter our circumstances, no matter what kind of battle we're going to face. You know, if we keep Jesus first, we're going to win the war. So I really, I really encourage people, I hope they catch that what God says he, he will do. And he talks about it when, you know, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm. Though, but the people that come must believe that he is. We must believe God is, you know. So in other words, people come to God all the time, but they don't, they don't believe that he is. Right. You know, and that, that's really what I hope people grab onto to the, in this book, you know, using stories and, and just using what the word of God of how, you know, to dress ourselves, to prepare ourselves. It tells us in the Bible to take up mm-hmm. and put on. And take is, and when you look into take, it's almost kind of a violent word. You're really fighting to put on the helmet of salvation. And, uh, and it was amazing when I was writing that, how the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I never really thought about what a helmet protects. You know, talking back my, my, early in my testimony, just my influence, what I listened to, how it changed my concept of life. When I put on that helmet of salvation, it protects my ears. You know, my mouth, my nose, my eyes, my senses, really. You know, my brain, yeah. you know. And it's amazing how... When we think of what Jesus has done and think of the forgiveness and the love, you know, and, and when somebody really loves us, we really don't want to hurt them. We want to help them and protect them. Where can they pick up your book? Uh, they can get it from Amazon. Okay. And uh, just, you know, type in the name and yep. you can get it from Amazon and, uh, or contact me. We're doing some book signings awesome. around in the area. The last one we had in, here in Lima and, you know, two people dedicated their life to the Lord awesome. at a book signing, wow. you know, but just being available and sharing the gospel, yeah. you know, and it's just really awesome to see what Jesus will do with your mustard seed faith. That's